Hello and welcome to Outside Xbox. You're watching Show of the Week. I'm Andy. And I'm Mike. This week I've been absolutely nailing it in Victorian Chimney Sweep Simulator 2016. <coughs> <coughs> yes, new record. You do realise that's new Sherlock Holmes game, Sherlock Holmes the Devil's Daughter, right? You just can't bear that I'm better at asphyxiating Victorian urchins than you, can you? Yeah, that must be it. Speaking of horrifying visions of the past, this week I've been playing We Happy Few. What's your high score? You say yours first. Yeah, it's not really that kind of game, Mike. At E3 2016, We Happy Few was one of the surprise hits of the Microsoft conference thanks to its kooky Clockwork Orange-inspired premise, creepy masked characters, and the way it included people smashing a rat to bits and then eating it. Hit it! Give it a whack! He did! He did! That has to be an E3 conference first. We Happy Few takes place in the fictional town of Wellington Wells in the 1960s, painting an unsettling picture of a very British apocalypse. But the thing that keeps the population of Wellington Wells going isn't their stiff upper lips, it's a drug called Joy. Everyone in Wellington Wells is doing exactly what he or she ought to. Smiling and laughing and taking their joy. This drug means that even as the world collapses around them, everyone thinks they're living in a brightly coloured utopian paradise. It's only when the E3 demo's main character, Arthur Hastings, which is the most English name ever, you guys, well done, stops taking his joy that he's labelled as a downer and ends up on the run. Oh my lord, he's a downer. Oh, Call security, down. we've got a downer. There are two other playable characters, probably called Margaret Parsons and Reginald T. God Save the Queen, who will have different stories, but developer Compulsion Games isn't revealing them yet. It's only when you're chased out of your office at City Hall's Department of Archives that you find out this isn't a Bioshock-style linear experience in an Orwellian dystopia, as many expected. Instead, it's a procedurally generated open-world survival game, similar to PC indie games Sir, You Are Being Hunted. You'll have to scavenge for supplies, evade drugged-up civilians, and police and manage your own dosage of joy. Popping pills will help to get you out of awkward situations, but take too many and you'll just end up one of the glassy-eyed joy zombies. We're life for noise? Popper joy. That doesn't mean there isn't a story, it's just Compulsion Games doesn't want to spoil it. Your primary goal is to escape Wellington Wells, and we're hoping for some sort of confrontation with the mysterious face of the government's propaganda, Uncle Jack. Wakey, wakey, everyone. It's another fabulous day in Wellington Wells. He seems nice, you know, for a totalitarian figurehead slash aggressive drug pusher. Oh, hello, dear. If you'd like a little joy in your life, but just a little, you don't have to wait long. We Happy Few arrives on Xbox Game Preview on Tuesday the 26th of July, so you can see if this sort of thing is up your 1960s cobbled street or not. Just spare a thought for William S. Sessions, director of the FBI between 1987 and 1993. All that hard work undone. What you should do is... Join the fun! <laughs> so they're all on drugs? A drug. It's called Joy. Right, with you. And they all wear those super creepy masks. Eh, I've worn creepier. Seen creepier. I've seen creepier masks. That's right, Andy. If you're after some facial wear to disturb your family and friends, I fully recommend you look to video games for a whole load of creepy ass inspiration. I mean, that's what I would do if I were into creepy masks. Of course, I'm not moving swiftly on. You are the only one. No one will be there to sing this song. It's not as though the savage, deformed splicers of Bioshock's Rapture need masks to make themselves terrifying. That's taken care of by their ranting, their Adam addiction, their murderous rage, you know, their whole deal. But it turns out a bloody rabbit mask is just the finishing touch you need to take a violent plasmid junkie from nightmare fuel to never sleeping again fuel. The irony being, these citizens of Rapture initially took to wearing these twisted masquerade masks to try to disguise the way plasmid abuse had messed up their own faces. Not an improvement, you guys. Why do they wear those masks? 
Maybe there's a part of them that remembers how they used to be, how they used to look. Welcome to my party. I don't believe you've had the pleasure. Speaking of disturbing masquerade masks, how about, oh, I don't know, every mask at Lady Boyle's party in Dishonored? What a deliciously sinful mask. There's this guy, these guys, these guys, these two weirdos, this one, this guy who clearly made his at home in a rush, not to mention the three ladies boil themselves in their matching masks. How do they even see out of those? Welcome to my party. I don't believe you've had the pleasure. So I guess the party invite said put something freaky on your face and not dress to impress. But if there's a prize at the end of the night for mask most likely to be evil and or haunted and or possessed, surely it will go to lady aristocrat Matty, who is wearing the face of a giant baby that looks like we owe it money, with upside down shackled baby limbs because I guess she had some baby handcuffs lying around at home. Well, I'm going to catch plague and die waiting out here. Corvo can hardly talk though, looking like a metal skeletor. You're a scandal in that mask. I like a man with poor judgment. The most disturbing thing about the masks of Majora's Mask is everything, but the second most disturbing thing about them is how when you put them on, they make you scream. <laughs> And yeah, the all-important mask of the game title is intense and hypnotic, but for my money, the one that will get you turned away from Halloween parties for taking it too far is the Zora mask with its fangs and veiny black eyes and, oh yeah, more screaming. <laughs> Look, take the candy and never trick or treat here again. The Doctor in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood multiplayer has one of those plague doctor masks with a scary giant bird beak. History says this was designed for filling with stuff that smelled nice to ward off plague germs, when actually it was designed to scare the bejesus out of everyone. Wrong again, history! That's the kind of bedside manner that would terrify patients back to health they thought at the time, probably. Hey, it's at least as compatible with the Hippocratic Oath as killing people with medical syringes full of what I assume is the plague. While we're on the subject of bird beaky masks from hell, how about the executor from inscrutable masterpiece of sinister survival horror Pathologic? It's a story-driven survival adventure set in a doomed town consumed by plague. The executor is someone who took a look at old-timey plague doctors and thought, I'll have some of that. He, she, or it really ran with the idea and gave us this cloaked horror whose very presence is an omen of doom and death and just bad times. I mean, I assume it's a mask and they're not just bird monsters. Hey, at least there can't be anything more skin-crawlingly spooky in this nightmare game, hey? Now it's time to see what's being written in the comments and given as excuses for trespassing by people playing Pokemon Go. Sorry mate, I thought it was just my house. It's not even a house! Look, just catch it and then leave. First up this week, here are your comments on this video about how to be good at Battlefield 1's domination mode. The key is doing the exact opposite of Mike. You see, sniper rifles in World War 1 were proper bolt action affairs and in Battlefield 1 that means manually reloading after every single shot. This takes ages and admittedly does make being a sniper more difficult than in most other first person shooters. Not so difficult that you can't shoot us repeatedly in the head though. In the comments, plenty of people rushing to congratulate us on our excellent performance, such as Big Daddy who says, That windmill grenade incident was possibly the most spectacular fail I've ever seen. Bravo OX, never have I seen anyone fail on so many levels. Come on, it was only like on three levels. Yeah, it was a very small windmill. Then there was the time we threw a grenade inside a windmill and fell down the entire thing and got blown up by our own grenade. Yeah, there's no real excuse for this one, it's just spectacularly stupid. On the other hand, historical accuracy fan Kiyomasa Senji says, Where are my red dot sights? Of course, they didn't have red dot sights back in World War right. I. Back then, you had to walk over to your enemy, draw a red dot on them, walk back to your gun and then shoot them. Sure, this speaks to the point made by commenter Webster TV. They say, the more gameplays I watch, and the more I think about it, the more I realise WW1 wasn't really a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I think that's generally accepted. I.e. means as a setting for the new battlefield. Oh, right. And now it's time for your comments on this video of Mike and Andy playing Chaotic Cooking Sim Overcooked. This is good, the burger's in there. That's a burger patty. Yeah. 
Tomatoes in but there. We just need lettuce. Ah, oh, beautiful. Uh, and one more plain one, yeah. So just serve oh, it no. up. I fell off the back. Commenter Uncle Uncle thinks that Levolution looks great. Played it up. What? Oh, whoa. Ah, uh, no, it's reconfigured the playing field. <laughs> Take note, Battlefield. Commenter Savage Dragon, meanwhile, offers this scene from your home life, Andy. Dinner at Andy's house. Andy, bad news, the chef's died. But dinner is ready and it's soup and hamburgers. Dinner saved. Oh, we don't oh have lettuce. I tried to make the jump. <laughs> Can you just throw the lettuce over? We've gone through like eight or nine chefs trying to make this <laughs> this dinner. So many deaths. Oh, no. Oh, I've, no, I've set uh -oh, fire to uh -oh. it. Well, it's a good job I moved this fire extinguisher over here then, isn't it? Commenter Timothy McLean, meanwhile, offers the following assessment of your performance. You were failing 15 to 20% of your orders. That's pretty terrible service. Granted, that's in part because you were working in hostile conditions, but that's no excuse for... OK, on second thought, that's a pretty good excuse. Uh, we were on two moving trucks, Timothy. I think you should be grateful you got a burger at all. Finally this week, your comments on this video about the VR experiences we want to play. Virtual reality headsets may be the next big thing in gaming, but you're going to need actual games to play on them to make them more than just extremely heavy, not very attractive hats. Commenter PTK377 has got a better idea than all of that, saying, I want a VR Spider-Man game. It could come with a free bucket to be sick into. Right, commenter Greg White, on the other hand, is less convinced. Is nobody going to address the issue of walking in a VR game? My house doesn't have the same layout as, well, all the upcoming VR games. It's also undoubtedly much smaller as well. I'm just saying. It could come with a free bucket, which you put on your head and then walk around your house to see if you bump into anything. If you don't, your house is VR ready. Do you have a load of buckets you have to get rid of or something? No. Oh look, here's a comment from WhammyTime91 who says, I wasn't too pushed on Star Trek Bridge Crew, but hey, if LeVar Burton is that excited for it, who am I to question it? <laughs> well, I'm sold. Right, I've got to go and finish up in the studio. Catch you later. Yeah, uh, can you lock the door so we don't get any more Pokemon hunters in here? Stealing all my Pokemon. That's it for this week's show, but prominent economists have predicted that the world will have transitioned to an entirely like-based economy by 2026. So get in on the ground floor now by pressing that button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. All right, lunch. I've got one of these burgers that we cooked and overcooked. Do you want a bite? It's a bit flamey for me, thanks. See yourself.